Hi, it's Paul from the Premiere Pro, and today I want to introduce a special kind of tutorial that I'll be doing regularly called What the F*** Does That Mean? A segment dedicated to those things in Premiere with names or descriptions that are vague or don't make much sense. And today's episode, What the F*** Does Maximum Bit Depth Mean? You've probably seen this setting before, either in your sequence settings or your export settings. And if you hover your mouse over it, you'll get this handy message. Rendering at maximum bit depth improves the video's quality, but increases how long encoding takes. Okay, what the f does that mean? Well, I know that bit depth refers to the number of bits used to color a single pixel, and the higher that bit depth, the more colors you can use, and the smoother the gradient from one color to another. So then the ability to do something at the maximum bit depth sounds very appealing, we just need to know what that something is. A lot of people's first guess is that this is where you can actually set the bit depth of your sequence, just like in After Effects. But in Premiere, this is actually set by the codec you choose when you export. For example, ProRes is 10 bits, QuickTime Animation is 8 bits, and GoPro Cineform can be as high as 12 bits. What this switch is doing is actually two things. The first thing relates to effects, specifically any effect with this 32-bit icon next to it. These can be rendered in 32-bit color, which is incredibly high. Even though both your source footage and export codec are probably a much lower bit depth, working with 32-bit effects improves color accuracy in your footage and can reduce things like banding and gradients. One of the ways to test this is to add a three-way color corrector, which is a 32-bit effect, to one of your clips, and then blow out the highlights. Now add the levels effect, which is not a 32-bit effect, on top of this. And using the output highlights, try to restore the detail in the image. As you can see, all I'm doing is reducing the brightness of those blown out highlights. However, if I delete the levels effect and add another three-way color corrector, I can actually bring those highlights back to their original levels. This behavior is unique to working in 32-bit color because of its high dynamic range. If you're not seeing these results on your own screen, it's most likely because you're working in software-only mode. You can change this by going File, Project Settings, and changing your Playback Renderer to OpenCL or CUDA if you have it installed. Now if I export this video, I'll export it as a ProRes, and make sure maximum bit depth is turned off. I'm also going to check Import into Project and then send it to the Media Encoder. When I press Run, look at what happens. You can see that I haven't got those highlights back at all. It looks just like it did with the levels effect. But if I go back and check maximum bit depth this time, and I always select the highest bit depth available if it gives me that option, then send to Media Encoder and press Run, it comes out looking exactly like it did on our timeline. Now before I move on to the next thing, I should mention a couple of things about 32-bit effects. The first thing is, if you want to work this way, you shouldn't mix 32-bit and non-32-bit effects together, as we saw with the levels effect. It just takes one standard effect to take you out of 32-bit color. You can easily filter only 32-bit effects by clicking this button here. The other thing is, if you're exporting with Media Encoder and you're using your GPU as your renderer, you don't have to check maximum bit depth at all. This setting is actually on by default. Now that covers 32-bit effects, but there is one other use for the maximum bit depth switch, and that's when you're exporting footage to a lower bit depth. For example, I have this 16-bit HD image, which is a nice smooth black and white gradient. I'm going to export this graphic as a ProRes 422, which is 10 bits, with maximum bit depth turned off. Now I'm going to bring it into After Effects where I can zoom into the image a bit better. I'm going to stack the ProRes video on top of the original and use the Difference Blend Mode to show me the differences between the two. And then turn on this adjustment layer with levels to exaggerate the blend mode. Now look at this, the wider something is, the more it's changed from the original color. 
And when I did the same thing with GPU rendering and media encoder, the results were only slightly better. Now look at what happens when maximum bit depth is turned on. You can see it's a more subtle conversion of color that's much closer to the original image. So unlike 32-bit effects, this doesn't happen automatically when you're using your GPU for export. This is only when maximum bit depth is checked. Now as I mentioned earlier, this switch can also be found in your sequence settings. But here this setting will only affect your previews, so only the clips in your timeline with a green line above them. And this setting can ultimately be overruled by whatever you select in your export settings. You may also notice that when you check this in the sequence settings, you get a warning that you should check your memory preference to optimize for memory. Personally, I really don't see that much of a difference on my own machine. You can see it specs here, so I keep my memory settings to performance. In fact, for all my presets for sequences and exports, I have maximum bit depth turned on by default. That way I know I'm always taking advantage of 32-bit effects and higher bit depth source files. You can run a quick test on your own system to see if maximum bit depth slows things down significantly. Create a new Photoshop file. Set the bit depth to 32 bit and add some clouds. Back in Premiere, drag the file into a sequence, make it about 30 seconds long, add a Gaussian blur effect and then duplicate it a number of times. Click File Export Turn maximum bit depth off, then click Q. In the media encoder, duplicate the output, and this time turn maximum bit depth on. Run the queue, and then check the render times at the end to see if there's much of a difference between the two. If they're roughly the same duration, then you may as well keep maximum bit depth checked by default. So that's it, I hope it's cleared up any confusion about the maximum bit depth setting. If there's something else in Premiere and you just don't know what the f it means, drop me a line, I'd love to hear about it. Otherwise, if you're looking for more tips and tutorials like this, check out my website, thepremierepro.com. Until next time, I'm Paul Murphy, and thanks for watching.